Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. This video is for my Physics 2 lab students, and it's all about RC circuits. RC circuit means we're gonna have a resistor and a capacitor in the same circuit together. The, the circuit we're gonna be looking at looks like this behind me. So we're gonna have our power supply. We're gonna set that up to be at 10 volts or as close as we can get it to 10 volts. We've got a switch here, we've got a capacitor. We're gonna be using in this experiment, a 10, 10 microfarad capacitor. And then we have our multimeter. This multimeter has two purposes. One, it's gonna be measuring the voltage of this capacitor right here as it discharges. Secondly, it's gonna serve as the resistor for the capacitor to discharge through. All right, so what happens here first is first thing we need to do is charge this capacitor up. So when we turn on our power supply and the switch is closed, the current can flow through this circuit that's going to charge our capacitor. Once that capacitor is fully charged, no more current is going to flow in this circuit. Very little current would flow through this multimeter over here, ideally. All right. Once we get our capacitor charged up, we're going to try it again, get it as close as we can to 10 volts. It might be 10.02, it might be 9.98, but we're going to get really close to 10 volts, and you'll see that in our experiment. Once it's charged up and we're ready to start the experiment, we're going to open up this switch. As we open up this switch, the only thing that's going to be able to happen is this capacitor is going to discharge through the multimeter. The current's going to run through the multimeter out of our capacitor, and its voltage is going to immediately begin to drop. It's going to start off close to 10. That voltage is dropping down. And what we're measuring, let me go back to my first slide, is how much time it's going to take us to go from that original voltage of 10 or close to it how much time to get to nine volts, to eight, to seven, to six, and so on. And we're measuring all of this in one continuous run. We're not getting to nine and then starting back over at 10 and then going to eight. We're going straight through in one consecutive run. All right, so as you're going through this video, the goal is hopefully that you're gonna be able to see the multimeter and you're gonna be able to see the stopwatch. As you're going through the experiment then, pause your video when you see nine volts on the multimeter, record whatever that time is on the stopwatch, and continue doing that for each whole number of voltage all the way down to one volt. We're not gonna go to zero because it would take a long, long time. But record the time it takes to get to each whole number of voltage all the way down to one. Once you have those voltages, you're gonna plot a graph of voltage versus time. And that should give you a nice inverse pattern. The greater the time becomes, the more this capacitor discharges, the less its voltage is. So you get a nice curve to your pattern here as well. What we're trying to find from this graph is the time constant. The time constant is to take the resistance of the circuit times its capacitance. And so to find that, what happens after one time constant goes by is your capacitor will lose 63% of its charge, 63% of its voltage. So that's why on this graph, I've marked off right here 0.37 times the original voltage. If we've lost 63%, we have 37% of the original voltage left over. So for us, if we start at 10 or close to it, this should be somewhere around 3.7 volts. And at that point on your graph, then you can just work your way across here, find where that intersects your data, come straight down, whatever that time is on your lab, or on your graph, sorry, whatever that time is, that is the time constant. Now, once we have that time constant, 
The real question here in this lab is to find the resistance of the multimeter. So if we rearrange our formula, resistance is the time constant divided by the capacitance. Time constant just came from the graph. The capacitance right here is what we're going to measure. It's a 10 microfarad capacitor again. It's not going to be quite 10, it's going to be close to that. But just know when you plug in the capacitance here, you need it to be measured in farads, not microfarads. Convert this to farads. All right, so let me show you the equipment we're going to need for this experiment. Not a whole lot of materials that we need here. Of course, number one for my students, printed out lab handout here that you find in Canvas to have all the instructions that you can follow along and fill in your data table right here as we go. We have our multimeter that's going to be part of the circuit, like I said, measuring our voltage as well. We have a small capacitor here in case we're going to measure this capacitance in just a moment. It's labeled as 10 microfarads. It might not be exactly 10 microfarads. Stopwatch for us to measure the time. Power uh, Extension cord so I can reach the outlet switch so that we can turn it on and that will charge up our circuit. Turn it off, our circuit will begin to discharge. Got my power supply here and a whole stack of wires. So first thing I need to do is get this set up for you to measure the actual capacitance. Measuring this capacitance, I turn my multimeter on and turn it right down here to cap. I'm going to take the positive lead, plug it in the positive side of the capacitor, negative into the negative. Now this capacitor takes just a moment to get its reading here, uh, but now you can see that on the screen now. It's 10.17 mic. You can't see it probably right there. 10.17 Get the glare off the screen, microfarads. 10.17 microfarads is our actual capacitance. All right, so now I'm going to construct this circuit that you saw on the board earlier, but this circuit right here. A wide view of the circuit. We're gonna zoom in more when we need to here, but just showing you have my power supply. I'm running from the positive terminal here to my switch, from my switch, I'm running over here to the positive terminal on my capacitor. The negative terminal on the capacitor comes back to the negative terminal on the power supply. My multimeter then, I've got it set over here that we're going to be measuring the voltage. My positive terminal is connected to the positive on the capacitor. Negative is connected to the negative on the capacitor. All right, so what we want to start to do is increase the voltage here on our power supply. We turn the circuit on so that it will charge while I'm doing this. And so you can see right now I'm at 4.6 volts here and 4.6 over here. The multimeter tends to be a little more precise. Got an extra digit over there. So that's the one I'm really looking at. And I'm just slowly increasing this voltage, trying to get it up to 10 without going you know, too far, too fast here. All right, so we're getting close. 9.9, let me get it, see if I can dial it in right on. 10.01, we'll call that close enough. All right, so now, what's gonna happen again, just so we can kinda demonstrate this, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this better when we really start but we're at 10.01 volts. And as soon as I turn the switch off, that voltage immediately begins to drop. And we're looking again for the time it takes us to reach nine volts, like right there. And then again, down to eight and seven and so on and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back on. The voltage is gonna jump right back up to 10. Point zero one. All right, let me get my camera set so that you're going to be able to see this multimeter and our stopwatch going simultaneously. All right, so again, same setup, power supply is turned on. I think I hopefully have this set well so that we're going to be able to see everything at once. I'm going to begin this stopwatch the moment I close 
the switch and turn, every, turn off the charge side of this circuit. So again, you're going to pause your video when you see nine volts here on the power supply so that you can record the time that is on your stopwatch. Continue doing that all the way down to one volt. All right, so here we go, ready and start. And I'm gonna to try to call out, you know, approximately when you're getting close to one, in case you're, you know, looking away. So nine volts right there just occurred. These first few come pretty quick. All right, so getting on eight volts. Down to seven and a half. Again, you'll pause these as long as you need. That's the good thing about YouTube, seven volts. You can pause it as long as you want to and then come back to me um, after you've had enough time to write down the time that you're seeing on a stopwatch. Now we're coming up on six volts. Now these take longer and longer. The the more this capacitor discharges, the slower the voltage drop becomes. Five volts. Getting close to four. And four volts. Now, the reason we don't want to go all the way down to zero volts is, you can see, this is already slowing down. And theoretically, you would never get to zero volts. The discharge would become so slow that you know, eventually you would read zero on the multimeter, but even that would take a long time. All right, we're coming up. And three volts. Now, one other thing is that you can notice now we're in the minute range. We're on two minutes, 15 seconds. You want to convert those minutes over to seconds when you're making your graph. So however many minutes times 60, add that to your seconds that you're seeing. Slowly getting there. And now we're on two volts. If this multimeter happens to beep at me here in just a minute, um, it's saying that it's been a while since you messed with the knob. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it beeps and wants to turn itself off before you get down to one volt. Hopefully that will not happen here. Hopefully we've been going fast enough. But sometimes it happens and all you do is just flip the knob, flip it back, and it'll be right back where it was. You just don't want it to happen while you're right on a hold number. Slowly getting there, slowly, slowly count down. Now, capacitor with a smaller value, this would all happen at an increased speed. The larger the value of the capacitor, the larger the time constant is, the longer this would take. All right, but we're almost there. And one volt. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop my stopwatch there. All right, so now that you've watched the video, you've got the data you need for your times and your voltage so that you can plot that graph. And so again, just summarizing, once you have this graph, now you can use the graph to figure out your time constant, 
knowing the time constant, then you can calculate the resistance of the multimeter itself. So hope this has helped. As always, if you need more help, got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Y'all have a great day.